Patrick Cook here. Um, thanks for joining me in the next session of our Mandelball 3D tutorial series where we're, we're talking about the Mandelball 3D software and uh, maybe I should, more importantly, I should say our artistic approach to the Mandelball 3D software. Um, uh, uh, moving along to the point where we'll eventually have a full animation. Now, in the last session, uh, we were uh, the last couple of sessions, we were talking about uh, the this uh, color adjustment, this uh, diffuse mapping. All right, and and I've left some very garish colors here so that we can better see what it is that we're we're working with. This is not how I want to uh, leave my scene. This is pretty bad, but it will. Sh it it is showing you how the colors are impacted. All right, on your Mandelball 3D scene or an object. So we have talked about uh, the color start and the color end. Now this little bugger down here is something very similar. Uh, but this is, um, this particular slider uh, refer, uh, uh, pertains to uh, your specular uh, and also your, uh, your transparency. I have found it's not normally something I get involved with. I don't really need it. My, and the reason for it is, is because the specular, as you can, uh, this, Let's um, let's change it up here a little bit here. I'm just pressing. That. Okay, my specular sort of follows uh, the the intensity of the, the the lighting, and and I just kind of prove that by you know clicking on random here. All right, Ooh, that's that's pretty bad. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this would be the color start and the color end pertaining to my specular light, uh, I'm sorry, specular coloring. All right, uh, something that uh, you can you can adjust. We don't have a histogram that was built into this control. We don't have a histogram there. Generally, I just leave those fairly close to the control uh, above it fairly close okay subtle little differences uh to the uh, scene pertaining mostly to specular now let's spend our valuable time here in moving back up and we want to talk about this thing right here color cycling choice and no eyeball I have looked and I can't I can't find any documentation of what eyeball means. I think it means no interpolation. 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 Okay. I think I, I'm pretty sure that that's what that means. But it has an interesting impact on on the coloring of your scene. So before we talk about these other two, let me just show you what this no eyeball does. You'll notice over here on our uh, on our color band, you'll notice how we have a smooth uh, change from like in this particular case red to turquoise. Okay, uh, that's uh, usually referred to as a gradient. I have a, and a more intense color that dies off, and then I have a, uh, a different color that increases to its maximum intensity for this particular uh, setting. All right, so I have these, I have these gr uh, gradient bands. All right, and here's my yellow, see? So I've got them blending to, into one another. Now over here on your scene, that gives you a, an interesting blend or transition from one color to the next. 
Let's see if we can find an example here. All right, uh, take, focus right in here. You see the yellow here? All right, and then I've got a nice gradient over to the red. All right, I think that that is probably going to be right in here. There's my yellow. And then I gradually change over to red. All right, so, so these gradient or these, these color blending from one color band to the next here in my diffuse color range is actually how that color is laid down in the scene. Now, no eyeball. If I click that on, all of these color gradations have been eliminated and I have a very sharp change from one color to the next. That They're not blended. All right. Now, if you look right here, you see the yellow? All right. All of a sudden, I go to a red. Yellow, boom, red. I'm going to uncheck eyeball. Watch down in here when I uncheck on eyeball. Uncheck. So I put great uh, 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 color gradients back into the scene. Now, in a, in, a, in a scene like this, where I have lots of, uh, uh, I have lots of uh, uh, objects and changes and patterns, well, I really do want to normally have my colors will, uh, will uh, uh, blend with one another. Uh, but I could have a, 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 a situation where I've got a, a very unique, distinct, discrete uh, fractal object in sp floating in space, uh, in which case I don't want those, those uh, gradients, those soft, gradual changes from one color to the next, in which case I can uncheck this no eyeball. All right doesn't really seem to have anything to do with these two which is kind of sort of in the in the spot within the user interface that they found and said ah there's a little spot right there let's stick it right there so but that's what that does okay uh you can think of it as with color radiation or with color gradual color changes or without all right now, we're going to talk about this color cycling. However, we're going to end this session right here because this is going to run us over time. And um, I want to try to, I want to try to maintain control here so that we don't get really long sessions. We all need to kind of give our brains a little break. Uh, get on with uh, some errand or chore that we want to do. And I want you to get the best possible value from this tutorial series. And uh, let me add that I am not concerning myself with however much time this tutorial series takes. I don't care if we get to 200 sessions. I don't care. Because what I want to do here is make sure that I cover as much of this application as I can for a couple reasons. And I talked about this in the previous session. The more you know about this software, the more you can do with it. The more you know about this software, the less frustrating it's going to be. The more you know about this software, the funner this will be. And I believe that everybody in the world should have a crack at developing a fractal image um, and it, it, uh, I could spend I could spend three hours talking about why I believe that that last point that I made another time um, so 
I want this tutorial series to be uh, uh, deep enough where you get maximum value from the 3D software. Okay. All right. I'll end the session here, uh, and I'll see you in the next session. Get yourself a cup of coffee. I know I will.